beta uprising! Those fucking normies! I don't want to talk about it, Grandma! The novel The Triflers by Monkey Jones is a gripping work of satire, and it is also the greatest literary dive into suicidal depression, incel culture, and school shootings that the mainstream media has never heard of. The book documents a school shooting conducted by Mario Quintanilla through the perspectives of himself, his best friends, and the jocks. And as much as I enjoyed reading the perspectives of characters like Dawn and Mason, I was most entertained by Mario's manifesto itself. What made Mario's chapters so enthralling to me was their gritty nature and stark contrast in comparison to other works of literature that cover subjects like teenage suicide. In a chapter called 13 Reasons Die, Mario rips apart Jay Asher's novel 13 Reasons Why. He criticizes it for its softball approach to the subject matter and unrealistic, childlike representation of suicidal ideation. Here's my review. It's fucking awful. It became very clear to me that Jay Asher has never felt depressed or suicidal a day in his life. All of Hannah's reasons for committing suicide were teeny bopper retarded nonsense that have nothing to do with actual depression. Boo hoo. A boy said that I have a nice ass. Golly gee, this girl pretended to be my friend so that I would give her a ride to a party. If you think that I'm being facetious, then think again, because these are literally some of the reasons brought up in the book. He's also critical of his classmates' shallow emotional response to the novel and their slacktivistic response to its messages. I was surrounded by weepy middle school students claiming that 13 Reasons Why was the saddest thing they'd ever read. Here they were crying over the suicide of a fictional character, when an actually depressed and suicidal person, me, was sitting right there among them. To the novel's credit, one of the big takeaways from the story is that people should keep their eyes open for signs of suicidal behavior so that they can help their peers through troubled times. The most infuriating part of all of this was that my peers had picked up on this message and began chanting it around, but none of them were actually following through with it. They were all bark and no bite. They claimed to care about helping their suicidal peers, but not a single person made an effort to do so. Mario's suicidal motivation is much more vengeful than a character like Hannah Baker's. He writes about wanting to put the weight of death on his classmates' shoulders, in a way that goes beyond just leaving tapes for those you deem responsible. I also wanted to use my suicide as a means of revenge against everybody who had ever wronged me. The kids at school who had always disregarded me and had refused to give me a chance needed to feel as though a life had been lost due to their hostility. News outlets and politicians ceaselessly talk about our medical system's failure to assist people with suicidal ideation. In one of my favorite scenes, Mario unleashes his wrath against a nurse who dismissed his cries for help. She's quick to pass off her responsibility onto somebody else and leaves him alone in the room with nothing but his emotions to dwell on. The doctor's response has haunted me for years. I'm sorry, but I'm just an urgent care physician. You'll have to talk to your regular doctor about something like that. I felt my internal walls of Jericho come crashing down. You killed me, I thought to myself as she walked out of the room. You stupid bitch, you just fucking killed me. I knew then that I would most likely be forced to end my life in order to end my suffering. When news publications or big-budget television shows such as Law & Order SVU try to cover the subject of incels, it tends to come off as cringy and inauthentic because the writers simply don't understand the nature of what they're speaking about. The terminology and emotions are so alien to them that they can't properly capture what it even means. 
But Monkey is someone who has done his due diligence to research the subject matter, and he's someone who pours his genuine creativity into capturing these kinds of emotions. Those stupid, slutty, preppy girls who probably went on and on about how disgusting I look, or how bad I smell, would be suspended upside down by their ankles. I would have a large collection of swords, and I would take my sweet time using them to slice their naked bodies over and over again. They wouldn't die from the cuts. I would give them as many shallow yet painful cuts as possible, and they would bleed to death from their wounds. Monkey knows what Monkey writes, and the same degree of intensity that was shown in all of his videos covering the subject is translated directly into his writing. If you're in a position similar to my own, then arm yourself with deadly weapons and take out everybody who has wronged you. I guarantee you society will change. Society will change direction in an instant. Concepts like feminism will be considered thought crime and will land people in prison. Betas across the land will have their pick at whichever women they want to sleep with. Nobody will ever feel the need to commit again. This is the future I offer you. This is the world I promise you. But the power to make those dreams come true is in your hands now. I've done my part to change the world. I've sacrificed my life for the cause of my people. And now it is your turn. I want to finish this off by reading to you guys Mario's expectations for how the media will cover his Bloody Monday massacre. Tomorrow, every major news network will be discussing why tragedies occur. News pundits will invite top psychologists onto their programs to discuss every aspect of my life. Sections of this manifesto will be displayed on screen, some in context and some not. Some liberal retards will claim it was way too easy for me to get my hands on weapons even though I stole them, while others will claim that the system failed to recognize my mental health issues. The more the media demonizes me and displays my brutal passages of this manifesto on television, the more people will become interested in learning my story and reading the full thing. This leaves us with one grim question. Will this book, The Triflers, ever be given the same kind of attention as a novel like 13 Reasons Why? Will it ever go beyond its fringe internet fame? The sad answer is no for all of the reasons that I have just stated in this video. A book like this would unfortunately just be punished for its morbidity, its realism, and its authenticity. You're wearing light blue. A fitting fragrance for a coastal hunter like yourself. Tell me, Agent Mako, has this book gotten you any closer to your prey? Do you sense blood in the water? Well, the edgy short film he made in high school about a year before Isla Vista, but the novel he wrote in college, and it's heavily influenced by my twisted world, and he's admitted to relating to Elliot on some level. Quid pro quo, Agent Mako. You were assigned to this case for a reason. The book landed in your hands by no mistake. Can't you feel that? Tell me, do you see a reflection upon Don's frame in Twisted Soul? Or perhaps the Mestizo Child, with his appetite for violent justice, as well as fatty cuisine from south of the equator? This juvenile primate has struck a nerve within your psyche, hasn't he, Agent Mako? You see a lot, Doctor. Hey guys, I really hope you enjoyed my creepypasta reading of a five-year-old book that I just finished maybe like two and a half weeks ago. I will leave a link down below for you guys to purchase The Triflers on Lulu. It is a very good read and I do recommend it. I'm also going to include a link to Simeon Jimmy's YouTube channel if you'd like to support him on here. Thank you so much to Horrified Onlooker for playing Agent Horrified. I will leave a link down below to his YouTube channel. And thank you so much to Not Anthony Hopkins for playing Hannibal Lecter. You did excellent work. If you would like to see more videos like this in the future, please subscribe to my channel down below. You can also follow me on Twitter at Big Tit Autism. I'm also currently in the process of trying to set up a Patreon, so if there's any of you guys out there who would like to financially support my artwork and my videos, I would really appreciate that. Thank you guys so much again for watching, and always remember, common filth did nothing wrong.